Hello everyone, I'm going to be showing you how to do the first homework for this course. And the first thing you're going to need, obviously, is the patent itself. I already have it here. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to edit. Insert image from clipboard. And that'll paste the image in here and you can move it around wherever you like. Um, but we don't really want it to get in the way, so... I'm going to set it as a background image by right clicking on the image and then going to the properties and clicking background image. So now we can't move it and it's stationary, but it won't interfere. And so the first step in doing this homework is to create the static model uh, of these four bar linkage legs. Uh, uses is something you'll encounter in future homeworks as well. So it's something you need to get used to doing. So let's start. We'll use the segment tool. So I'll start with our crank, which is approximately from this point to this point. Our follower, which is from this point to this point. And lastly, our coupler, which is a ternary link from there to here, to here, and back. So these three links define our four bar linkage. We'll use the green color for the crank. We'll use the red color for the follower. And we'll use the blue for the coupler. So now we have our static model for one of the legs of our four part linkage. And so now we're going to be moving on to the dynamic model of this leg. And the first thing you want to do is create a ground as kind of a reference to everything that you're making. And I'll do that here by using the parallel line tool. I'll click on this x-axis and it'll create a parallel line to that x-axis, which I can place anywhere I want. And I'll place it right here, just so it lines up with the follower here. Next step is we need to create this ground link, which is from this point right here to this point. It's an invisible point, but it is a link. And we'll do that first by creating a slider an angle slider, which you can name it whatever you want. I'm going to keep it as default alpha. And we need to be able to recreate this angle onto this axis right here. And we'll do that by using angle with given size. I'll click on this point and the point here on the left, which will allow me to record this angle counterclockwise. And I'm going to choose alpha because that's what I named the slider. So now you can see that the slider is directly linked to this angle we created on this axis. And we can just hide these, uh, the axes now. We don't need them. And we'll draw a line from this point to this new point that was created. And same thing, easier to visualize though. And this line is going to represent our ground link. But now we need the actual physical dimension of the ground link because it's not just one line, it's a finite segment. And in order to do that, we're going to need the compass tool, which you can think of as a ruler that uses circles to measure. So we click on that point and this point and I'll create a circle and we'll put it at the center of our pivot here. And I'll just hide this. Uh, the shortcut to hiding objects is clicking on them and pressing Control G. And I'll hide this because we don't need this. And so now we have two options. We can either have our ground link from this point and having it at the intersection of this circle the line or at this intersection. And the way to know which point you're going to use is going to be dependent on 
your static model its current position you when you as a recommendation when you are replicating your dynamic model uh, always try to orientate it initially as where the uh, static model is just so you know you're connecting the right points you're using the correct intersection points just a useful tip so we'll use the intersect tool click on the circle and the line and we'll hide this guy because we don't need it and we'll use the segment to create our ground link and i'll hide the circle keep the line because we need it and we'll color it and this is our ground link now this segment And now that you have your ground link, the next step is creating the crank. And you'll see this pattern a lot where you first create your ground link that's uh, able to rotate, and then you create your crank that's also able to rotate. And we'll see, uh, you'll see the uh, naming terminology is used more later on when you learn curvature theory, why it's called a crank, why it's just called a coupler, why it's called a follower. Um, so, We'll do another slider first, which will present the angle of the crank. We'll call it gamma. And we need to use angle with given size again. And I want it to be about this point, the angle. So I'm going to click on a place here and on this point and choose gamma because that's what I named it. And that'll create an angle here about that point. And as before, we'll hide this. We need to be able to find the finite dimension of this. So I'll create a line here as last time. And I'll hide this angle. So Again, we're going to be using the compass tool to get the dimension of this crank. So you click on its fixed pivot and on its moving pivot and about the point. And again, we'll use the intersect tool on the circle and this line. And like before, you get two options where you have the crank orientated this way or this way, but based on our static model i'm going to want it oriented downwards so i'm going to hide everything i don't need so i don't need this point nor this point i don't need the circle and i no longer need the line and i'm going to create a segment that represents our dynamic crank which is from there to there and i'm going to color it green And so this represents your actual crank. And this will be connected to your motor through gears or whatever drive chain you're going to be using in your walkers. So I'll keep it orientated here and I'll try to match up what it looks like on the static model as a reference. Okay. And I'll hide this line. I'll need that line. So this is the ground link. And now we have a crank. So the next step is to create the other two links, right? Um, I found the easiest way is to first do the follower. And the way you do that is by intersecting two circles created uh, from the dimensions here in the static model. So we'll use the compass tool again. We'll click on this point, which is already defined, and this point, which is not defined yet. And I'll create the circle. I will use this point, which is defined, and this point, which is not defined, and we'll do it at the crank. So now these two circles are going to intersect in two locations, here or here. And then so we're going to intersect them. And based on our static model, the correct point would be this one, because that's the orientation of the follower at this particular position. So we'll use the segment and we'll connect it there. And I am going to hide these circles 
So you don't need them at this point, and I'll color it all school red. And you can see that these are actually, even though there is nothing in between here, they are actually connected rigidly through uh, geometry. And you can see the crank is able to rotate entirely, but the follower does not rotate entirely. It is only rocking back and forth between some predefined angles, which you can also calculate. But anyways, we're going to now move on to the coupler. And same thing as you might think, you're using, the most tool you're gonna be using is the compass tool. So we'll click on this point and this point. And we'll click on this point and this point. So usually when you're measuring the compass tool, just as a reference, is that you're always gonna be using first uh, dimensions that uh, are already defined in your static model. For example, this point was already defined here, and this point was already defined here, but this point was not defined. And the way you get that is by intersecting these two circles. And we'll hide these circles now because we don't need them at this point. And we'll do a polygon that represents our coupler. And I'll also make it blue. And I'll animate this. So currently it's oscillating. So if you want to change it from oscillatory nature, you right click on your slider and object properties. Uh, and you're going to want to, oops, did I need to click that? Object properties. and call it to increasing or decreasing, depending on which way you want to rotate. You can also change the speed. Um, I'll just make it three. And the way to verify if this four bar linkage is the same as here is to compare its coupler curve. So the coupler curve is a trajectory defined at this particular point on this coupler link. So these should be approximately the same. In order to create a coupler curve, you're going to need to use the locus tool here. You'll click on this point and on the slider. And you can see it is approximately the same. So we know that this link is correct. And I'll delete it because I don't need it right now. And so the next step you're gonna be doing is creating the second leg. So we already have the first leg here, but now we need a, another leg that's going to be out of phase with this. So obviously the first thing, we don't need to change the ground link. The ground link stays the same. So we're going to need another crank. So as you might expect, we're going to be doing some of the same steps as we did before. We go to our compass tool. We'll click here and here for the length, and we'll place it back here again. Uh, and you can also use the same circle I created before, but I don't always keep track, so it's a preference. We'll create a slider, which is going to define the angle of this second crank relative to this crank. And we'll do angle with given size. We'll click on the circle and this point. Uh, okay, I actually do need, so this line, oh, this line, okay. So you're going to need to uh, intersect this line with the circle again, because we need this point to create the angle. We'll do angle with given size. We'll click on this point and this point, and I'll call it epsilon because that's what I call the slider. And we can hide the line again. And we'll do a segment. We don't need to create another line. 
premiere here, and that'll be our second prank. And I'll call it dark green. And I'll hide this angle. So this will present the second crank in its orientation relative to the first crank. So I'll keep it for now at a 360 or zero, just so it's technically at 180. And now we need to recreate this second follower. So we'll do that by what we did before. We'll be using the compass tool. Actually, let me orientate this back so I get a good reference. So we use the compass tool. We'll get the size. We'll place it at the same pivot because that hasn't changed. And we'll use this point and this point, but not here now. It's going to be at this crank. And so your follower is going to actually now be the intersection between these two circles. So we'll intersect them. Hide that, get these circles again. And our follower will be a segment from this fixed pivot to this moving pivot that we just created. And I'll color it, I don't know, orange. And you can see that all links move. So the last step is obviously to create the new coupler for these two links. So as before, you're going to use the compass tool. At this point, use these two points at this point. And we'll intersect the circles that before. And I will hide that point. I'll hide the circle and that circle. And I'll hide the circle too. And we'll use a polygon tool to create the triangle link, which is actually called ternary, as I mentioned before. And I'll make it magenta. So now we have two four of our linkages out of phase with each other by a specified angle. So this is going to be 260 degrees. So if we want it here, which would be 180, because this is how I define the angle. The angle is relative to this line. So this would be zero. This would be 180. And over here would be 360. But we'll keep it here for now. And the way to check if these two four ball linkage legs are the same is to look at the coupler curve that they create. So we'll use the locus tool again. We'll click on this point and on gamma, the crank slider. We'll click on this point and gamma as well. And it should not change. If there is slight deviation from this, that means that this link, second link you created is wrong and you need to start over again, uh, at least remaking the second four bar linkage. But if they're superimposed and if it did not change, then you're good to go. Uh, and I'll just delete one of them because we don't need to, and I'll animate it. So you can kind of see how this walker would move first leg forward, second leg backwards. It has an approximately flat trajectory in this direction, but you can actually see here the pattern itself did not have it intended to be like that and orientated in this direction. It should be orientated perhaps for us and our purposes. Perhaps we want it to be orientated. Uh, let's see, we can have it moved a little bit to the left here, not too much. But anyways, the point is you can uh, use the grand link angle to orientate your legs however you want. You can use the crank angle to see how the legs move relative to each other. And you can use this slider to or to manipulate the phase of these two legs. So that's basically it as far as the homework, but I'm gonna show you guys a little neat trick that you can do at the end.
uh, I'll show you right now. So you can use this tool called construction protocol. And it's essentially going to walk you through every single step that you created. So we'll click play. And now this goes step by step through every single process that I created. And this is a useful tool to being able to go back and recreate your linkages if you need to in the future. You might not need to use this for this particular four bar linkage as it's kind of simple, but when you get into curvature theory, uh, you will definitely find this tool very, very useful. And I'll just, just pause it for now. And just to get back to where you were at the very end, uh, you want to pause it, of course, and click on fast forward to the end, and you can just exit out of construction protocol, and you'll be back where you end up. And you'll once again make sure that you have your locus tool there. And you can also change the color of this by clicking on the points, making it orange. And then you can also click on the locus itself and make it orange. That's it, guys. Thanks for watching.